In this video, we're going to create a new script that will allow us to create a new user parameter and get information from the user. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this part of our video series, we're gonna take it to the next step where we've already been able to gather information about an existing user parameter. Now we're going to use the API to create a new one. Now again, the ultimate goal here is to have a script that we can run that creates a list of user parameters that are helpful for a design. In our case, we're talking about things like draft angle, and we're talking about wall thickness and rib thickness. So what I wanna do in this case is I wanna start a new add-in so we're gonna to go to create a new script using Python. And this new script, instead of getting a user parameter, I'm gonna say API to keep it at the top of our list. And I'm gonna call this one create UP for user parameter. And we'll create that. Then we're gonna edit. And again, I'm gonna trust the author. So once again, we get all of the same starting point information. I'm gonna space my message box down a little bit to give me some space to work. And I'm gonna get started with the same thing where we create design and we're gonna set that equal to adsk.fusion.design and that's going to be .cast. Again, cast is important because it allows us to change the level or um, the way that some objects are manipulated. And then inside of the brackets, we're gonna do our app.active product. So inside of act, the app.active product, that's gonna allow us to begin working with things inside of Fusion 360. We're not gonna go through the same methodology where we were pulling information from an existing user parameter. However, I wanted to show that first because one thing that we are going to be skipping is going to be error handling. Now, what I mean by that is if you run a script and you try to create a user parameter that already exists, then you will get an error. And those errors need to be handled in reality, but what we're doing here is we're not trying to take too many leaps. But we already know how we can get information, we can find a, um, a parameter. So ideally what you would do is you would use the user parameter and dot item instead of item by name. And the item will return back each item that's in the list. And what you could do is you could return a list into a, an array, a variable that stores them all, you could look through them to see what they are, and then you could edit or adjust them to be whatever your values are or create new ones. But again, that, that's getting a little bit too far down the road from where we are in terms of our learning right now. So I just thought I, wanted, I would note it because it is important to think about things like error handling or what happens if the user cancels a dialog box. We're going to skip all of that, but I, I do want to just at least mention it. So. I'm going to put a little space in here, uh, and what I want to do is I want to start to define some variables. Now, this could be done in here, or this could be done in other places, but since we are trying to keep it simple, I'm going to put everything in this try section. And inside of here, what we're going to do is we're going to start creating one P N A M E, P name for parameter name. And I'm going to set that equal to width. Now, remember the one we looked for last time in our design was length. So we could use the same file if you still have it open. Next, we're gonna create one called PUnit. Now, while this one isn't strictly required, uh, I think it is helpful for us to have a variable to store the units because later on, what we could do is if we were gonna create uh, some sort of dialog box, then we could put these in as the default units and allow the user to change them with like a drop down box. But again, for right now, we're just sort of thinking ahead and we're, we're planning these things out. Then I'm gonna do P expression. Now remember expression is what the actual value is gonna be entered. And I'm gonna enter this as 5.0. And you'll notice again, it's purple, it's a number. And the other two that we had it are strings. So they're of different types. We have strings and we have an integer or a number. And now what we really need to figure out is what is what do we need or what is required in order for us to add a user parameter. So we already know that we uh, we found this information before by looking through the help file. And we did it before by using design.userparameters.itemByName. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start typing design.userParameters. Again, tab will automatically fill that in for me. Dot, in this case, we're doing add. Now, remember that anytime we're calling these functions, we generally are going to have brackets on the end. And as soon as we put the first bracket, the left bracket, it's going to pop up this dialog that gives us information about what it's looking for. So it's looking for four pieces of information. The name, which is a string. The value, which is something called value input. The units, which is a string. And a comment, which is a string. But the comment is, is actually optional. But then you'll note that it returns, the arrow here is showing it's returning the user parameter. Now in this case, what it would actually return is like a true false, whether or not it worked. So again, if we're error handling, then we would want to create a variable and set it equal to this. So we had a place to capture that. We're not doing any error handling or checking. So uh, that information is, is, is not gonna come back anywhere. And you'll notice here that we can also scroll down and it gives us more information. Things like specify an empty string by just using the comments. But the important part here is really that value, that value input, because this can't just take this P expression. It's gonna give us an error. We're gonna do it with just the P expression and then we're gonna come back and figure out how to sort of troubleshoot that value input. So again, the first thing it needs is a string, and that is going to be the name. And we already gave it a, a string, so we're gonna type in P name, comma. Next is the value input, and we're gonna just assume that P expression is gonna work, comma. Next is the unit, so P unit. And we could have put these strings directly in here, but if you're building a function that does something, in this case, adds a user parameter, what we would do is we would build the function to do that, and then we would change the variables that get added each time. So this gives us more flexibility. And then for the comment, I'm just gonna put empty quotes. So theoretically, what should happen here is this should add a, a new user parameter. It should add a user parameter called width, units millimeters, and the expression is five. Now I can tell you that it's not going to work, and I can tell you that because it took me a while to, to sort of work through this, but let's go ahead and save this and let's run it and see what happens. So from our add-ins, we're gonna to go to API create up and we're gonna run. And you see here it failed. Now, again, I knew it was gonna fail because of that value input, but we wanna to try to sort of figure out what this means. So line 17, the design.userparameter.add P name, P expression, P unit, and the comment. So it gives us exactly what's on that line. It tells us right here. Don't worry about the file locations, but uh, what we really wanna look for here is the issue is in add return, user parameters add. And you can see here it's bringing in self. Now remember self argument is going to be that design dot in this case. Then it shows the other four things, name, value, units, and comment. And here is the main part that we need to focus on, type error. So type error is telling us that the value that we passed it is not correct. This is a very similar error we saw when we tried to concatenate a number with a string. So it's telling us here that value input, and it has this constant here. So when we think about this, when we think about what's going wrong, we know that value input is the problem. And one thing that we want to do is we want to go back to our user manual. We want to go back to the help documentation. We're going to find user parameters object. We're going to find add. And then we're going to find this value input. Now, anytime that something is uh, hyperlinked here, we'll be able to click on it and get more information, obviously. But you can see everything that we see here. This was all what we saw in the tooltip that was inside of our program. But value input we have to dive a little bit deeper. So when we go to value input, there are different ways that we can create. So when we look here, we've got create by Boolean, which is a true false statement, create by object, create by real, and create by string. Now create by real is the one that we're gonna use. And if we read about it, you can see here that create by real creates a new value input using a double. Now, this is, it's important to understand that we have strings, 
But when we come, when we are talking about numbers, when we're looking at actual numbers, then we have things like float and we have int, um, and there's just different ways that we can represent these based on the number itself, the number of decimal places, and so on. So this create by real is the one that's going to help us convert what we want uh, into something that we can use. It is also very important to note that centimeters are the default units for fusion. Now, the user can set millimeters and inches and all that stuff, but in the back end, it's always centimeters and angle is always radians. And these are important because it's going to be something we need to think about when we're converting units. So we now know that we need this value input and create by real. And when we go to create by real, it shows you here Autodesk Core, which in our case is going to be design dot value input dot create by real. And then it shows the real value and it passes back a return value. Now I'm going to go back a few steps. I'm going to go back to our user parameters. And when we take a look at the value input, it's important for us to uh, to sort of read through this, you can see here, if the value input was created using a real, the value will be interpreted using the internal units for the unit type. Again, that's centimeters. And we're not gonna do any conversion of the units yet. We're gonna figure out what this looks like, but these are all the little important factors that we need to think about. So we know that this piece of information, this P expression is wrong, but we we don't really know what we need to do with it. So. Let's make a little bit of space and underneath P expression, this is where we set the, you know, set the value at 5.0. What we're going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to create a new variable and this is going to be called P expression real. Now real is important because this is what we're going to pass back through. So we're going to pass into this and it's going to be ADSK dot core dot value input. So when we go to value input, notice the icon is different. Now when we hover over value input, that is a class, just like design was a class, just like application was a class. And after value input, remember it was create by real. And these are the four options we have string, real object and boolean. For the input to a user parameter, we need create by real. And then inside of this, after we, we do the create by real, we need the expression. So you can see here the real value that we're passing is a float. And the thing that we're getting back is a value input. So it creates the, the value input object using a double. So what we're going to do is we're going to put P expression in here. And then it's going to pass back this P expression real. So I'm just going to add to this over here, P expression real. We're going to save that. We're going to go back to our program and let's just double check our user parameters, make sure nothing happened. We still have length in here at 50 millimeters and nothing else is in here. So when we go back to our utilities, back to our scripts and add-ins, back to create, we'll run this and nothing happens. Well, it looks like nothing happens because we don't have any message boxes or things, ha things that pop up and tell the user that something happened. But if we go back to our modify and change parameters, and we take a look, we now have one called width. And inside of here, you'll note that the expression is 50.00 millimeters. So we, we put in the value of five, but we got out 50. And again, that's the difference between the units in the program or centimeters and the units in uh, Fusion. When we spit this out, it will do the conversion here. So if we want 50 millimeters to be what we need, let's go ahead and, and delete this, otherwise we will get an error. Let's go back to our program. So if 50 millimeters is what we need, we need to do some modification of this. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna do it manually, and in the next video, we're gonna talk about user input, and we're gonna talk about actually using the functionality in the software that can help us work with units and make sure that they're okay and actually pull from the default units in the software. So what we need to do is we need to take this expression and we need to divide it by 10. So if, if we ask the user to input a value and they said five millimeters, then we would need to divide it by 10. So that way we're passing it a centimeter value and then the result in the software is actually five. So we can just do divide by 10 here because both of these are numbers and we can save that 
and then we can take a look. And you know what? While we're here, let's go ahead and bring back our UI message box. And this will just tell us that we need to do something. Check the parameters. So that way we at least get something that pops up and it tells us that we did a thing. So under utilities, add-ins, create UP, run, check the params. So now if this worked, we should see five millimeters. And you can see it worked. So our new parameter width is five millimeters. So one way that we can think about this is, is that now we have the functionality where we could hard code all of the units that we want. Keeping in mind that if we're trying to do something like draft angle, we need to convert the radians to degrees. And when we're dealing with units, in this case, a length unit, we are actually looking at centimeters in the code. So if we want to spit out millimeters, we need to divide whatever our value is by 10. And again, if we're, if we're dealing with degrees, we need to convert it because it's a radian in the back end. But at this point, we've gone from very basic information in Python, creating variables, uh, actually creating a class and learning what that means. And then we went to actually pulling information out of Fusion. We learned how to pull information out of a user parameter based on its name. And now we can apply that same knowledge and we can use variables that we know how to create and we can activate or we can enable class-based functions, class-based methods, to do things. In this case, what we're doing is we're using create by real to convert our, our number into a value that can work inside of the user parameters add. So now we can create that. We could again hard code it and we could make, uh, we could just have the script do everything we want. But I think there's still a little bit more room for us to learn based on this example. So in the next video, I am going to talk about using the units manager and the units manager will help us do like, um, I guess I'd call it conditioning of the user input. So it can take things like it can find the default input values. We can figure out if the, if the value that the user added was actually um, okay or not. And then we can use that same sort of functionality to then uh, progress and say, hey, you know, user, give me something, give me a number, give me a the name of the user parameter, and then we can apply that to what we've already learned. At this stage, make sure that you do save your work. We are going to keep uh, sort of creating these new each time from scratch, but it is important that you at least save these, and then uh, you can always go back to them as little bits of reference code, because oftentimes what ends up happening is you try something, you delete it or comment it out, and you keep trying, and you might forget that something worked in the past. So I think it's a good idea, at least as you're starting, to build these little bits of code. And then each time we'll create a new script and then we'll build a little bit more. And then you can, you know, you can archive them or you can put them in another folder. So you have them, but you don't necessarily want them to show up in your API folder. So at this point, if you have any comments, please leave them on the video or send me an email. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.